Gottlieb's tastes good like a beer should. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Yeah. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. No matter how you take your hooch, we've got something ice cold and on tap. Now, serving it to you straight and unfiltered, here are Craig, Scott, and Dan. That's right. Welcome in, everybody. It's the Unfiltered Gentlemen. You've made it. Thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. Thanks for drinking along. I am Greg. Over there is Scott. What? Um, hey, guys. What's up? Yeah, that's Dan. Yeah. It's getting mighty funky in here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> we are playing the funk. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. Shout out to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Whoa, what? What's up, Chapel Hill? How about them Tar Heels, yo? That's right. Yeah. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us and drinking some tasty beers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we made a prediction last week that Houston would be our top listening city of the week. And <laughs> Just didn't quite make it. I think we missed it by one week. For yeah. some reason, they were the lowest. I yeah, it's weird. How that. That. Weird how that worked <laughs> out. But uh, even better, we had Chapel Hill, yeah, no kidding, North Carolina. Dig it. Not too far from uh, Asheville. I looked it up, and Asheville yeah. has some tasty, tasty beers. So big ups, Chapel Hill. Uh, our burp word of the week. For obvious reasons, Super Bowl. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Super Bowl is coming up in just a few days. Very excited for it. Uh, don't forget when you're on the social medias and you're posting up those beer pics. Hashtag show us your beers. Tag us as well. And when you're listening on your favorite podcast app, rate and subscribe to the show. It helps people find us. Whether it's uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, whatever you got, we're on it. And we need those ratings and reviews. And we're not too proud to not beg. <laughs> uh, we got a lot to get to. We got some Super Bowl beers to be drinking. All right. Of course, we've got uh, Old Timey Word of the Week, Beer Baby of the Week. Dan's got a movie to talk about. Oh, okay. yeah. That's right. And some booze news. And at the end of the show, I have some Super Bowl 54 fun facts. Nice. Cool. We'll, we'll break into those, but Can't I think. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> strap on those excited pants. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, I'm getting very excited for our beer of the week. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer. I will indeed. Uh, this one is a new one. Comes to us from Firestone Walker. It's their Flyjack Hazy IPA. 4%, 25 IBUs. Has a 347 on Untapped and an 84 on Beer Advocate. And I picked this one specifically because the lower ABV thought this is one of those good beers that you could pound all day for the Super Bowl and not get too fucked up. Like it. Yeah. Yeah. 4%. You could have a sixer of these and just catch a nice buzz not get too hammered. Uh, From Firestone, they say it's high high on flavor, low on regret. Just 96 calories and 5 carbs. And you know Mr. Low Carb over here is all about the low carb beers. Uh, Oh, yeah. Everything you want from a hazy IPA with nothing to weigh you down. Citrus, hazy, crisp, this is Flyjack. Firestone Walker's new 96 calorie beer, maximum flavor, minimum calories, no compromises. Hops they used in the kettle were Cascade, Kalista, and Kalista, and then they dry hopped with uh, Strata, Mosaic, Chinook, and Sabro hops. Mm. A lot of hops going in this bad boy, especially on the dry side. Look at all these hops. <laughs> exactly. How do hops get in your blood? <laughs> By drinking them, you'll inject it. By drinking them. It's raining hops. <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, what do you fellas think of this one? I like it, man. Do you? I, I like that they kind of tone down the hazy a little bit. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It's like. I don't know. Like it's almost like uh, I like to like dilute my drinks a little bit, like to get the the sweetness out. A little water with your whiskey. Yeah, and I don't know. I'm digging how it's not like hazy, hazy, mm-hmm. but it's still delicious beer. I call it cloudy at best. Yeah, yeah. I can dig it. Yeah, Scott, what do you think? It's pretty good. I might I might remember the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First time in years. I'm remembered. trying to. Yeah, Niners playing. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So we had a few months back the Dogfish Head. "Quote unquote healthy oh, yeah. IPA, oh, yeah. yeah, and uh, if I, I was not a fan, I thought it was pretty bad. 
especially the call night. If you would have said like just a healthy light beer, I'd get behind it maybe. But as far as IPAs go, it tasted nothing like Was an IPA. Not correct. Yeah, and I didn't understand that because hops don't add any calories. <laughs> so why could you not just dry hop the shit out of it and make it a low cal IPA? I don't know. Could man. not understand it. I think Firestone has nailed it. This I is by so. far yeah. the best quote unquote low cal or healthy or whatever IPA I've had. Um, you still get that hoppiness. Look, it is not some juice bomb. It's not some uh, you know torpedo from Sierra Nevada where it's all you know pine in the back of your mouth. Mm-hmm. It's not one of those heavy hitters with tons and tons of hop flavor. But that being said, it tastes like an IPA. It tastes good. It just maybe tastes a little lighter than you would normally get out of a normal IPA. And look, when you're watching carbs like this guy, or you're <laughs> trying not to get hammered all day at the Super Bowl, this is a great option. And you're not having to drink yeah. White Claw. So uh, I'm down with yeah, this. this. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I could drink one or six of these, no problem. Yeah, I, think, I like it. Yeah, I think Firestone nailed it. This is the best, quote unquote, healthy beer I think I've ever had. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Good job, Firestone. Let's move on to Crotch Talk. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. It is. I just have one grievance to share. And it's an update on the situation I've been covering the last, I don't know, month or more maybe even now. It's my Home Depot update with our window oh, leaking. Yeah, that's oh, right. Boy. If, you, if you've been listening, you'll remember that our slider, sliding glass door has been leaking in the rain caused a fair bit of damage trying to get hold of home depot who are the installers Ooh. the fucking horrible installers of this sliding door finally got a hold of them here's the update they finally got somebody to come out and take a look and he gets here and uh you know very nice guy these people don't work for home depot they're contractors that home depot hires to do these jobs for them home depot doesn't actually have their own installers it would appear and he gets here he's like oh okay so i'm he didn't know what he was doing. Like, not his fault, the, <laughs> the dispatch fault for not giving him the notes. And when I talked to dispatch after the wife had already di- talked to dispatch, I was like, yeah, you know, and she told you that, you know, about the damage and thing. Oh, uh, I'm sure she did. I don't have my notes in front of me. And when I told her that, she goes, he's told me that like eight times so far. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be bad. So the guy shows up to fix and he goes, so what are we looking at? Uh, I hear uh, you just need some sealant done. I was like, no, no, no. I could do the sealant myself, buddy. I was like, there's some fucking damage. And I show him. He's like, oh, yeah, they didn't tell me any of this. He goes, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this upright. He's like, can I come back in a couple of days? I said, sure. He goes, I'm going to get all the right stuff. Because he didn't have the right tools with him. Okay. He thought he was just stealing. He goes, first of all, I only brought my white sealant and your trim is tan. So it'll it's look racist. stupid. Yeah, I know. So it'll look stupid <laughs> if I do the white on the tan. So I need to go get that. And he goes, and I'll go get the trim and everything and, and fix you up real nice. I was like, yeah, if you want to come back, that's fine. Scott's making a face. And I, I made that exact same face. Yeah. I was like, fuck, we're going to see this guy this again. Uh, I'll never see him again. Here's the thing. He's supposed to come back on a Saturday around 3. By 5, I texted the guy. He's he's a text-heavy person. And I said, uh, still showing up? He's like, so sorry, job ran late. Yeah, can I, I come, knew it. Can I come in on Monday? AKA, I'm drunk. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is Saturday, after all. I'm watching college football. Yeah, he's like, can I, can I show up Monday? I'll get there before you leave for work and you could just leave me here and I'll lock the door when you leave. No. Oh. And I was like, oh, not super, com- but we do have some cameras. So I was like, all right, I can turn on the cameras and, and position them. Watch him carrying stuff out. Right. Well, Spider-Man all over the house. <laughs> <laughs> you know what my number one concern is? I was like, it, it would be interesting for him to walk out with a TV because you guys have seen my TV. It's pretty fucking large. Oh, yeah. Uh, but not hard to walk out with would be my beer collection. Oh, man. <laughs> He's like, I'll have my phone with me. He's not going to walk out with my phone. That's, I, the, that's where the money is. Yeah, I'll take my <laughs> laptop. But my beer collection is uh, easily a few hundred dollars worth of beer. He'll die. And, yeah. You, know, you want to see me go all vigilante on something like that? <laughs> so I, begr- I finally agreed, and I just I put on all the cameras when he was here, and and uh, he's like I said, he's a really nice guy. N- clearly not actually working for Home Depot. <laughs> and uh, he gets here, and I said, "All right, you all good? And anything?" And and I helped him, you know, take the blinds off and whatnot. And, and he's, "All right, I'm good." I'm like, "All right." I said, "I can come back at any time and sign the paperwork." I said, "Except for this time." He goes, "All right. Well, if I finish at that time, then you can just sign it and scan it and send it to me." I said, "All right, fine." So he finished, of course, in the window that I said I couldn't of come course. home. Because I only work about 15 minutes from the house. And I was like, fuck, that's kind of shady. So uh, first opportunity I got, I came home and checked on it. And everything was still here. And uh, all the beer was still here. 
Um, so I was happy about that. Not only that, he ripped out all the damaged trim and replaced it with what looks even better than it looked before. Uh, we had just the most basic of trim before. He put up this really nice like little siding around it. And he even put the little trim at the bottom at the floor so there's no gap between the slider and the floor itself. Did a phenomenal job. Like, right really cleaned it up nice. Very not Home Depot of him. There you go. Like, took it upon himself to do a really good job. Righted the wrong. Yeah. And then uh, a few days later, it rained. And I was very nervous. And I set like paper towels down on the floor <laughs> just to see. Like If one <laughs> drip drops, I want to know it. And so nothing dripped. Nice. Yeah. I was very, very happy. First time there you go. So, uh, wow. I think you got to like do like a service card or whatever for yeah, that guy I, survey. Well, you know, he owns his own company and then oh, okay. Home Depot contracts with them. And I, and I was talking to the guy a little bit and he goes, yeah. So the, and he had all the paperwork from before. He goes, yeah, the guys who installed your first windows, like Home Depot doesn't even work with them anymore. And I, I was telling him how bad they were just to deal with when they were installing the windows originally. And he was very apologetic. I was like, hey, man, I know it wasn't you. I know you're not that company, and I know they're gone. Like, you don't have to apologize. He's like, no, I'm really sorry to go through that. And they're really bad. I was like, they were fucking horrible. Like, I I don't know what they're doing. He goes, yeah, I don't know what they're doing either. They put, you know, white sealant on your tan trim and this and that. And it just was really good to the point where today I actually asked him for a quote because he does electrical work, too, about some electrical things. So I'm waiting to hear back about that. So uh, he may have found himself a, a continuing yeah, customer. Nice. So right on. Yeah, one cool. good thing finally came out of Home Depot. That's good. Yeah. That's a feel good story. Yeah. It, it surprisingly ended well. I thought it was going to end with like having to get the homeowner's insurance involved and potentially a lawyer. And I was really not looking forward to it. But uh, he did a really good job. Cool. So thanks. Yeah. Nah. Guy. Actually, there's two things good came out of Home Depot. What's that? I no longer work there. Oh, you, shit. Wait, you worked <laughs> at Home Depot? Well, I mean, uh, a place kind of like Home Depot. Oh, yeah. they're just oh. getting better and better. Home yeah, Depot. Stocks, are, <laughs> got, stocks are soaring right now. Yeah, <laughs> really trimming the fat around that place. <laughs> got rid of the guys who installed my windows. Got rid of this guy. The, the lazy cashier. Yeah, lazy cashier doesn't know anything about plants. Nothing. No, <laughs> he really works nothing. in the garden department. Yeah, I just I can do the register. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, what's what's the plant? Yeah. So yeah. What a sad day. It was a sad day, and uh, I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. They were sad to see me go. I was, sure, I was sad yeah. to leave. My last day, I uh, had sick leave, so I just like, I'm not going in. What's my last day? Why do I care? Yeah, use that sick leave. Exactly. You don't get paid out on that. Yeah. All right. All right so, all and right. this is a typical kind of a Home Depot. This is how they treat their employees, because they treat their customers like shit. Yes, but they, they do. But they treat their employees like so much the same. Uh, so I, I call in. I'm, I'm on hold for 10 minutes, and finally... Now, I know that the assistant manager's name is Stacy, but when she gets on the phone, she goes, hello, Stacy. And so I didn't know uh-huh. what she said. So I'm like, I, well, I'm on hold for an assistant manager. Yeah, this is Stacy. Like, Sorry, are you Susie or yeah, Stacy? I, I thought she was saying Cece. I'm like, I don't know a Cece, but, you know, it's this morning shift. And so I'm just like, okay, well, I'm not coming in today. And then I have no idea. She, I have no idea what she said. Mm. So I just repeated myself. Uh, yeah, I just want to let you know I'm not coming in today. Okay, I'll put you down. Bye. And that was it. Oh, okay. And so I'm, you know, heartbroken that I had to leave. Did you get, did you get your last paycheck yet? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't count those chickens yet. <laughs> oh, damn. We'll see what happens. We'll all see. Right. Yeah, all, yeah. all anyone wants to know, Scott, is what did you steal? <laughs> Anything I wanted. <laughs> yeah, as long as I'm a customer, stop. I can walk out the door. Yeah, oh, stopping, there you yeah. go. Yeah, and they can't even stop you. you oh, know they can rule. yell stop and take a picture of my car and everything. But oh, that's can't. true. Do they ever turn in those pictures, like to the cops or anything? <laughs> Do they do anything about it? Sometimes. Oh, er- errors so rarely. You know, it was weird because... So I should one- Uber the next time I steal something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. At, at one point... Keep the timer running. There was a, a cop that came in late one night, and he actually witnessed some guy taking stuff and you know, <laughs> took care of it, and he arrested the guy. Oh, did he? But Yeah, but one of the uh, guys that works there, he actually told the guy, he, he said, this is a nightly thing. And uh, so this officer, on his own time, would come in late at Home Depot for like a couple week period of time mm-hmm. and just kind of check things out. And he arrested a lot of people. Did oh, he really? Shit. On, yeah, off duty. I was say, was he on he, duty there? No, he was off duty. And he's, he's like, this stuff kind of pisses me off that people people do this. Was he kind of an older guy? Uh, he's kind of middle aged. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds like one of those old guys who just hates when the whippersnappers are stealing yeah he'd come in like around you know they, they would close at 10 so around between 9 30 and 9 45 pretty cool he'd just kind of hang out and uh yeah it was funny because one night 
he actually already arrested the guy and his girlfriend was still inside the store <laughs> <laughs> and he, she wouldn't come out because she said the cops out there she wouldn't come out and he finally actually just went in and got her and at first I thought it was a boyfriend girlfriend uh, confrontation because uh-huh. he was playing close oh yeah and then I looked and I saw the gun on his belt like oh this guy's a cop I hope <laughs> <laughs> yeah or a redneck. Yeah. <laughs> Another customer. And, yeah. yeah. And then he eventually, he convinced her. She's just like, I'm not leaving. I'm buying this gum. And there's like some stupid reason to stay inside. Can't decide if she wants wintergreen or peppermint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he just finally took her by the arm and said, come on, you're coming outside. And Dang. Uh, when he got her outside, he's telling him to put cuffs on her and things. So either this is kinky or uh, he's a cop. Look, so. A little both, maybe. Maybe. We've yeah. all seen super troopers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that's turning into a pumpkin. <laughs> Wow, yeah, nice. I'm, I am with all that crap. So no more exciting life for you of no. thieves and cops and robbers and shit. Nope. No. Yeah, all right. Well, there you go. Not at that place anyway. That's true. <laughs> Who knows? Um, anybody have any grievances or anything they want to share? I guess something else I'm going to share. Okay. Uh, about Home Depot, I hope. Yes, about oh, Home Depot. Good. Oh, is nice. Is that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that place. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I have very silently kind of quit Twitter at this point. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh. I just kind of look at all the concern oh, on everyone's God, face here. Your, the millions. I know. I missed your Twitters. I know, man. The commish. I know. Oh, man. You're making me feel bad now. Yeah. Commissioner Dan. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I just kind of like saw it. It was like kind of wasting my time a little bit. It's a little toxic. Yeah. A little bit. And, uh, you know, and I felt like Sir Food Savage is cool. Got to know that guy a little bit. Uh-huh. Scott's cool, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> Jury's out. Unfiltered yeah. Gentleman's cool, you the know. Best, and I, yeah. I actually met some really cool Unfiltered Celt- Greg's not bad. <laughs> I actually met some really cool Celtic fans, which is... What? You, that's how you know something's wrong with Twitter. When yeah, the only yeah, you fans quit. Yeah. I can make friends with are Celtic fans. Oh, you know? on second thought, yeah. yeah. It's, a good, move <laughs> it's a good thing you're done. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I got to say, they're, they're, they're pretty cool. And I, I suggest therapy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I'm gonna say, hopefully they kind of felt the same way about me, but I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll see if they're like, back. ah, fuck that guy, <laughs> <laughs> fucking douche, yeah, man. But uh, I kind of feel, uh, I don't know. We'll see if I, I, I've done hiatuses before off of Twitter. Right. This time it was a little serious, though. I kind, hmm. I didn't deactivate my account. I've heard there's kind of horror stories of that if you do that. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah, like it's like hard for you to like get your stuff back. Or, oh, okay. You know, or your mentions and all that stuff. So sounds like a divorce. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. So I, I just kind of deleted the app and um, just kind of. Have you missed it at all? Not really. No. Okay. Have you replaced it with like Instagram or anything, or just, just no, nothing? nothing. Wow. Yeah. So um, I'll probably still write, but um, I don't know. Just on the website. Yeah, I, I watched this. Uh, I I don't know if I was drunk and I watched the wrong TED talk or something, <laughs> but like I had seen one where this guy was talking about like what a waste of time Twitter was. Yeah. And like I don't know, I must have been at that right stupor that it just kind of clicked with me. Yeah. I have a hard time, you know, I don't think it's a huge secret that I run the Unfiltered Gentleman's Twitter. Mm-hmm. I have a hard time with Twitter. It, it's fairly negative. Now, we have some really good followers. Yes. You know, like you said, Sir Food Savage or uh, Fontana Jim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you uh, go. Chew Fontana Jim. Chew Your Beer. Chew Your Beer. All great guys. Um uh, I love when, you know, Chew Your Beer always tweets at us yeah. with different questions about beer I can and, and dig polls it. and that. Love all that shit. But a lot of the stuff you see on Twitter is overall fairly negative. It's hard, man. Yeah, where I find Instagram to be more positive. Really? Yeah, more on the, you know, it's because I only follow for the most part beer related accounts and mm-hmm. then, you know, friends also. But uh, you get more like, hey, this beer was so great. Or even if it's a bad beer review, at least it's an honest beer review. Right. Where, where Twitter seems to be full of trolls and horse shit. And really is. Just, yeah. So I, I can agree with you. I honestly, with the Unfiltered German, have been kind of not on purpose, just by chance, taking a step back, just kind of getting lazy on Twitter. Oh, okay. I guess would be a better description. And it sucks because like uh, uh, Fontana Jim and, and Chew Your Beer and those guys, like they're much more active on Twitter. Okay. And I want to be like, hey, come on over to Instagram. <laughs> come in the cool kids pool. Like uh-huh. we, we want to talk to you still, but we're over here on the grams more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Twitter uh, is probably my least favorite of the social medias mm-hmm. at this point. Wow. I don't know. Because I, I do Twitter, but I don't do Instagram. I, I think Instagram is more fun. It's a little mm. more engaging. I've made some some really good friends. I mean, you know, like Allie and Callie, we made some great friends on, on Instagram. Oh, yeah. 
Um, and Twitter just, I don't know, it's a lot more negativity on Twitter. It really is. It was really hard for me to kind of, well, it's easy for me to quit it, I guess, but yeah. like, it was hard for me to kind of put up with it really. I was just like, you know, I was trying to put some stuff out there and it's like, I don't know, on my timeline, all this like crappy shit would happen. It was like, dude, like people posting videos that weren't even basketball related and I was <laughs> following because they were talking basketball for a while. But they'd be like, bro, what the fuck is this? And they're like, I don't know, someone's getting shot in the head. Or I'm like, dude, I didn't want to see that. Yeah. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? It seems like there's more. Uh... He's, Scott's all <laughs> He's like, oh, you didn't like that video? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, dude. <laughs> didn't mean to tag you on that one. <laughs> yeah. Seems like there's more of those like keyboard cowboys on Twitter. Like they're not afraid to be dicks because they're right. on their keyboard. And, uh-huh. Oh, I'm so so cool. Yeah, so, I don't know, man. Twitter's just... got its good. You know, when the fires here in California, in Southern California, especially last year, were really bad. We had the Woolsey fire, and like I was evacuated for a few days, and the news was not covering really where my house is. They were covering where the stars were in Malibu, mm-hmm. and the only way I was getting information for a while was Twitter. So there's some really good things about Twitter. Okay, there's a couple guys locally that. Uh, go on there and they just listen to police scanners and they type out what they hear. Oh, okay. And so that that was the reason I knew I was being evacuated before anybody came over. Oh, so it was Twitter. Yeah, it was Twitter. It was the reason I knew I could go home before any official announcement was made uh, or at least made its way to me. So there's some things that Twitter is really good at. It's really good at getting out news fast. Um, true. But I also, like I said, I find it's a lot more negative. The people are a lot more, uh, <laughs> I don't know, brazen they're a lot more em- emboldened to say shitty things yeah. it seems i don't know so and i don't know i, I can't I, totally blame you yeah and it was that. like and then you know my niche was kind of nba twitter and i found that a lot of that is just like little kids man that like don't know <laughs> shit mm. and I, i'm not paul Heyman. i'm not here to educate you so <laughs> yeah. i had to i had to say i'm having done, twitter man. battles with lonzo ball you know it's it's impossible it's impossible yeah well, uh, I don't totally blame you. Thank you. But step on board and join us on Instagram. I'll think about it. I think you'll be glad you did. <laughs> As uh, will I. Yes. Both of you. Get on the grams. Yeah. All right. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Scott's like, what's Instagram? We'll, yeah. make, a, we'll make a team. I have no idea what it is, but yeah. Yeah. Scott and Dan's Instagram. <laughs> Skadan. 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 <laughs> Dot. Dot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Old timey word of the week. Slubber de Gullion. Slubber de Gullion. I was wondering how you're going to pronounce that. Do, do you think I got it? Slubber de Gullion. Gullion. Yeah. You nailed it. You yeah, nailed okay. it. Yeah, got it. I'm surprised. Yeah. No one else to tell me otherwise. Um, it's a worthless, lazy person. Oh, shit. I was <laughs> thinking that. Sounds like somebody that sleeps a lot. Yeah. That cut Slubber. Deep. Slubber. Yeah. 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 That cut deep. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. directed at anybody in particular. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you slubber de Gullion. That's right. Uh definitely not a slubber de Gullion. No one could blame you for bed swerving. It's time for the beer babe of the week. Yes it is. I don't know her real name, but you can find her on the grams at the Hoptimist. Like optimist, but with an H. The Hoptimist. And there are, sorry, Scott, two underscores between the and Hoptimist. Damn. The underscore underscore Hoptimist. Oh, like two Instagram. underscores two. on that. Two, oh, yeah. shit. I, I can't. Just took me off of Instagram. Yes. <laughs> there goes Scott's Instagram career. That's true. <laughs> oh, so we can't have like Dan yeah. and Scott with in, like Dan underscores. underscore Scott. Yeah. No. Scott would try Good to log Lord, in and be a disaster. Yeah, just, but anyway, Dennis Scott, the hopt, <laughs> yeah, the optimist though, That's right. worth searching out on Instagram. The underscore underscore optimist. She's from Melbourne, so she's got that Australian accent. Oh, that is so. Oh, hot. wait a minute. Yes, and she's drinking some tasty, tasty beers. In the picture we're looking at right now, she's drinking a collab from Deeds Brewing and. Uh, Froth Beer Magazine. And the pic you showed me of her, she's got uh, a great smile. She does. That she's, she's wearing on there. B- great big smile yes. is what I mean. And <laughs> Very cute smile. I like that. I yes. like that. Not down there to smile right there. In Melbourne. I like it. Yes. Hopefully uh, not burning up down there. Yeah. Lots yeah. of fires still. Oh, yeah, man. Lots and lots of fires. Yeah. Shout out to those guys, man. Yeah. Shout out to all that shit. We know what they're going through. We know how it is down here yeah. in SoCal. So stay safe out there. Yep. Uh, we have a movie from Dan. We got oh. a bullpen to get to. Nice. Some booze news. Of course, Super Bowl fun facts. 
What do you say? Should we start off with a little movie talk? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. So, uh, yeah, the movie I watched is Dolomite is my name. <laughs> That's uh, starring, it's a new uh, Netflix movie that's starring uh, Eddie Murphy. I did not know at first that it was Netflix. Like, they made such a big deal about the oh, premiere. I, know, right? I thought it was like a real, I mean, not that it's not a real movie, but right. like, a, like a normal movie release. And I was like, oh, this is a Netflix thing? Oh, yeah. crazy. It's a trip because uh, I, I saw the clip for it, you know, the trailer for it. And then, yeah, you're right. Like, and it's funny, some of those trailers for those Netflix movies, like, look good. And then you find out, like, they're kind of crappy. Like, right. You know, like, uh, I don't know. Like, like the new Adam Sandler movie with Jennifer Aniston. About anything with Adam Sandler. Well, there's that. <laughs> anything since The Wedding Singer? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, I like Happy Gilmore and That was before Water the Wayne Singer. Oh, was it? <laughs> I think so. Uh, we'll have to reference IMDb. We'll have to figure that out, yeah. Yes. Anyways, uh, but this one, I love this movie. This is a good movie. Oh. And I strongly recommend it for anybody. Um, so this movie is about uh, Rudy Ray Moore, and it's kind of bi- a biopic of him and uh, how he came up with the, uh, the idea to make a Dolomite movie. I mean, uh, I don't know if you know what Dolomite is, but it was kind of mm-hmm. one of the uh, key black exploitation movies back in the seventies. Like, oh, okay. it is awful. It is <laughs> awful. But uh, it, it, it kind of shows what it took, like you know, from him to kind of make the movie. And I, I had uh, reviewed a movie kind of like this a couple of years ago called uh, Dis- Disaster Artist, uh-huh. and that was starring uh, James and Derek Franco. Derek Franco, Dave Franco, Dave Franco. I think it's Dave. Yeah. And uh, they were playing um, Tommy Wiseau and uh, right. Oh Hi Mark. Oh Hi. Yeah. So, and it was kind of a. I, wa- I watched that movie and didn't really like it. Only because uh, what they failed on was uh, making me want to root for the main character. Mm-hmm. And in watching it, Tommy Wiseau still seemed like an egocentric weirdo right. that I just could not relate to. And uh, he, he had the money to make a movie, and this is what he chose to make. It was terrible, and you're right. never going to change my mind on it. <laughs> like uh, that's what that's where Dolomite is my name comes in. And this movie, it, it really makes Rudy Ray more. When I had seen, say, like the trailer or whatever, or commercials or clips of anything with Dolomite, I kind of thought it was like somebody saying, okay, we're going to make this movie about this, you know, kung fu black dude, and he's going to come in and beat Whitey and all this stuff, <laughs> and you're going to play him Rudy Ray more, and I don't care, you know, that you're kind of flabby or whatever, you're going to do it. <laughs> you know, like I felt like these were all decisions that, you know, producers, movie, Hollywood, somebody made. Right. No. It's Rudy Ray Moore, man. If, if you watch the movie, like, you know, I, I figure, like, you know, I'd actually recommend it to you, Greg. Okay. Actually, kind of like, you know, it's like a, um, it, it, it's, you, Rudy Ray Moore, what he lacked in actual, probably, talent, he made up for in, like, Go Getter. Like, I mean, he, he said, if he had an idea in his head, he was going to fucking do it. And you couldn't stop him. You couldn't tell, tell him no. He was going to fucking do it. And despite everything you said, you say, oh, shit, he fucking did it. Like and so All that's right. kind of what I got out of the movie. Uh, the clip I kind of brought because um, th- there's a lot of people in this movie. There's Craig Robinson is in this movie. Oh, nice. Wesley Snipes is in this movie. He kind of took me a little out of the movie, if not yeah. like kind of temporarily, only because uh, his character is like seems to be like the only one that's like not believable. Like he seems like he's a little way too out there. I believe it if he had to pay a bunch of taxes, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I but he was in jail. Yeah, uh, he does kind of play like an uh, an antagonist to Rudy Ray Moore so it, it, maybe they're kind of paint, painting him in a bad light and they want him to look kind of weird could be that could be and if so then Wesley Snipes kind of nailed it but he just if I can nitpick this movie just a little bit it would be his character but uh Keegan Mikey Michael Key from uh Key and Peele's in this movie and um and he's actually that's part of the clip that I'm uh, I brought in is um uh Rudy Ray Moore he's he kind of collaborates with uh Keegan Michael Key's character uh, whose name is Jerry Jones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because if you look at like, you know, Black Dynamite and all this, or um, uh, Dolomite, and you kind of look at that stuff, like uh-huh. uh, it'll show Rudy Ray Moore, a picture of him. It'll show like all the characters in it. And it'll show Jerry Jones. And it's like a picture of Jerry Jones from the Dallas Cowboys. Cow oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they got the wrong Whoops. one up there. <laughs> but uh, What's anyway. this old white guy doing in this <laughs> yeah, movie? It doesn't make any sense. So, uh, but anyways, this clip is uh, Rudy Ray Moore, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy, and uh, he's talking to uh, Jerry Jones, and Jerry Jones like he finds this guy because he's basically putting this movie together, 
and uh, he's just bumping into people by chance, you know, basically, and he, he he takes advantage of it. That's what he does, and he finds this guy. He goes to see this uh, show in an inner city. It's like a like a play. And uh, he finds he wants to know who the writer was because, you know, he has an idea for a movie. He has this, you know, you know, the black exploitation character, Mm -hmm. you know, that he's been taking on the road and done stand up and everything. And that's what all so far that he's done with it. But he wants to make a movie. And, uh, you know, the the idea that he that he has, he says, I I need someone to write me a story. So he gets this guy to, to do the story for him. Um, but like I said, this is like the perfect, uh, kind of blend of, uh, someone that, that even believes in him and it's kind of telling him no, where he's just like got this, this crazy, all these crazy ideas that he wants to make into fruition. So that's what this clip is. We want this thing to be raw. Tell it like it is on the streets. Yeah. Lots of pimps and whores and cussing and Kung Fu and karate. Brothers love all that Kung Fu and karate. Do you know karate? No, but I'm a fast learner. I can learn how to chop me a mother. Yeah. 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 You know what we should have? A all-girl kung fu army. Um, you know, there, there's there's plenty of story opportunity, Rudy. Across this nation, inner cities are being plagued by violent crime. I I, I feel the government hasn't stepped up. That's it. It's whitey's fault. The mayor's corrupt, and there's an exorcism. God damn it, an exorcism. Yeah, you know all that who oh, mothers in hell. Um, I, I don't know how that fits into our urban uh, motif. So that's the that's the clip of that one where uh you know and it's just funny like how many people just keep telling this dude no you know and he's just he's in it he's just finding everybody by chance there's this one uh quote that he has and I'm going to try to quote it correctly hopefully I'm probably going to paraphrase <laughs> it but uh somebody tells him that that he's lucky and he says hey you know what they say luck is just a uh, opportunity when opportunity opportunity meets preparation and I was okay like, oh shit man that was pretty deep sounds very athlete yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So that's why the good people are always lucky. It seems like so. I like that. Do you know karate? No, I'm a fast learner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and 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 this movie also kind of goes to prove that because uh, then I wa- I walked into it kind of thinking like ah and then Eddie Murphy, come on man. Yeah. But you know that come was, on Doctor Doolittle. Yeah. See, but that was PG Eddie Murphy. You get Eddie Murphy in rated R movies. Oh yeah. All of a sudden it's another motherfucker. Like his old stand up. That's right. Mm. And that's that's why this movie just works for me. So All right. yeah, go fucking watch. I was drinking along with it laughing along with it good movie good good i think it won some awards uh at the, it should uh, golden globes it should kind yeah. of where it became on my radar so mm-hmm. all right was it funny was it, what would you classify this as yeah funny uh and, and, it, and it had heart was the kind of thing i had about it like i said you really were rooting for rudy ray more like you wanted it to kind of end well like you know the I'm aware of Dolomite, you know, and I was like, I don't know how this is going to end because I know it's kind of a crappy movie, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, you want something good to happen to him, and I, I feel, I don't know, maybe that it does. I'll just put it that way, but okay. you got to see what it is. And so Dolomite's the name of the actual movie that... Correct. Yeah, made. Rudy Ray Moore is the actor who played okay. Do- Dolomite. Okay. Mm. Have you seen Dolomite, the actual... No, oh. I was aware of it. I think Snoop has an album... Uh, I think it was the one he did with No Limit. I can't remember which one that one oh, is. Oh, God. Top Dog, I think is what it was. And he has Dolomite doing the Boy, intro. was that a match made in hell? <laughs> well, I, I do like that one because it had Bitch Please on there. Oh, and, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was a good one. But yeah, um, yeah but he has uh, Rudy Ray Moore uh, speaking as Dolomite talking on there. Oh, how funny. So I'm going to turn the motherfucking White House black. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So go out and see Dolomite is my name. Yes. You're saying. Do it. All right. Good. Just stay in, I guess, and watch or, it. It's on Netflix. Uh, yeah. Don't go out. Yeah. Go in. out, get some beer, come back, watch the movie. That's right. All right. I like it. Uh, we got a bullpen beer to get to and uh, some booze news, of course, Super Bowl facts. Let's uh, let's start off with a couple of stories and we'll make that call to the pen. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. While the gentleman pour the beer over there, I'll say that Lagunitas has cut another 5% of their workforce Ooh. in an attempt to restructure, uh, I don't know, a year and a year or ago, we talked about they cut, I think at that point, 12%, now they cut another 5%. Uh, not looking good. And I will say I still have that Lagunitas THC beer in the fridge, have not tried it yet. Hmm. I do need to do that and give a full report on the show. Um, This, let's see, oh. Free Natty Light. This is one of my favorite stories. Free Natty Light if you turn 21 in the year 2020. Hmm? Uh-huh. I'm in. Yes. 
Turning the big 2-1 comes with a few changes, including being old enough to purchase and consume alcohol. If you're turning 21 this year, Natural Light has a perfect gift for you. The beer company is gifting anyone who turns legal age in 2020 a free case of Natty Light. Oh, shit. Not a bad deal for beer lovers. Uh, I love that. Not a bad deal for beer lovers. I love beer, and I don't want that. Right. <laughs> yeah. The promotion being dubbed Natty B-Day appears on the brand's Twitter page. The beer moguls noted that turning 21 is a big deal, and we want to help you celebrate. Continues. So for all the 21-year-olds 20, in 2020, your next Natty is on us. The account wrote alongside a photo of a cake that's a dead ringer for a case of Natty Light. How does one participate in the promotion? Yes. <laughs> First, the birthday girl or boy needs to purchase a case of Natty Light. Keep the receipt or UPS code because you have to submit it on their website at mybeerrebate.com. Oh. The person celebrating must also show proof of turning turning 21 this year by submitting proper documentation. I can only assume that's like a picture of your ID or something. No, oh, geez. Uh, once everything is good to go, Natty Light will send over a full refund for the cost of the case. It's the online version of Put It On Their Tab. <laughs> Sally, the promotion cannot be redeemed if you turned 21 last year and feel like you're owed a free case of Natty Light. <laughs> uh, so it takes 10 minutes to redeem your free Natty Light, and you get like $5 back. Doesn't seem worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of time for a little cash, everybody. Yeah, uh, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it is kind of weird. So. They could have made that easier. Yeah. Yeah. How about instead of like paying you back, you just send me a free case of beer for turning 21? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, all right. Is everybody ready to make that call? Yeah, doesn't ready? Gillette do that now that I think about that? Do they? Don't they like when you turn 18 or whatever, they say, here's some razors on us. Oh, shit. You know, I missed out on some prepared free razors. To, yeah, spend really? $50 like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> every other week. Yeah. Yeah. Every four pack of razors is like 40 <laughs> bucks. It's, that's why I stopped shaving. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's make that call. He calls to the bullpen for beer. Yes, he does. All right, we are drinking. This is a big one. So uh, before I get into the beer itself, I mentioned that these are beers for Super Bowl Sunday. Fly Jack being the one you drink all day to kind of get you through, not get too hammered. Okay. Big, gay, big day. Uh, this is if your team loses. <laughs> <laughs> this is Evil Twin Brewing's 120 Days Dry Aged Stout. It is... 17.5%. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Has 70 IBUs. It contains a 93 rating on Beer Advocate, as well as a 421 on Untapped. Very short description. Imperial Stout brewed with dry-aged malt. And what's that name again for the 49er fans? <laughs> ah, Flyjack. <laughs> Got him. Because you want to remember that win. <laughs> Man, on the nose, I get uh, booze. Yeah. And more booze. Yeah, Holy hell. Booze. Yeah, big booze on the nose. Woo. Wow. What do you guys think of this? Dang. Big? Like it. I like yeah? it. Yeah. What's the key ingredient here? Like, what am I tasting? It almost tastes like kind of alcohol. smoky. There is some smoke to this. I'm, yeah. I'm finally getting a sip. Uh, yeah, alcohol. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this is the same percentage as a lot of wine. Um <laughs> Yeah, there's they must have some smoked malts in there. Okay. Um, yeah, a lot of smoke, which I'm not a huge fan of in my beer. Oh. Um, yeah, it's just funny because... What else are you getting? Yeah, when you read the description, it was kind of like brief. Mm -hmm. And it was like, there, drink it. 17%, <laughs> just fucking have it. I will say, it does a pretty good job of covering up that 17.5. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. For, for how boozy that is, you take a little sip, it's like, oh, that doesn't taste like 17.5. <laughs> It's funny because I feel like I wrap my head around 17.5 till I fucking say it again. And I'm like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. That is huge. Mm. That's hard to do, too, in a beer. I mean, yeah. that's, you got to get some very healthy yeast. Um, yeah, I get that smoke. Might get a little bit of chocolate in there. Do you I, want that smoke? <laughs> <laughs> puff, puff, pass. Um, I get a, maybe a little bit of chocolate. Definitely warms up on the finish. It's very... You know, last week we had the tiramisu where it was like pillowy oh, and all yeah. that. Not that at all. No. Uh, it's very thick, very viscous. Yes. Kind of motor oily. This would seem sticky. Sticky icky. That's yes. right. Ooh wee. Um, are you guys a fan of the taste? Like like booze level aside, what do you guys think of the taste of this well, thing? 
It, it doesn't taste like 17.5. So for that, True. it gives, gets some thumbs up. But if, but if somebody told you, like, hey, it's, you know, 7%, what do you think? I, I like the taste. Do like you? It. Yeah. It's I'll a, be like, I could really taste the booze for 7.5. <laughs> <There's a lot laughs> That's a warm for 7. <laughs> a lot of booze in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, am, I, found, I have found that I'm very sensitive to smoke in my beers. Like, I taste them more than I think the average person does. Okay. So, I very much am getting smoke. Like, to me, I'm <laughs> a, just a lot of smoke, a hint of chocolate. So, I'm not loving it. Oh, man. Personally. Uh, I don't hate it. Damn. Greg doesn't want that smoke. No. Not, <laughs> not the campfire smoke in my mouth. <laughs> Different kind of smoke, maybe. Um, yeah. I, I think they did a great job of hiding the alcohol. There's a little bit of chocolate in there. If they could just tone down that smoke, I think you'd have a pretty good sipping winter, keep you warm beer. I gotta say, I like the smoke. Do you? Oh yeah. Good. I, look, some people that's their jam. For me, mm-hmm. uh, I find that I just taste it. I, th- I think I taste it more than anybody else. Like it's just oh, I'm so okay. sensitive to it I see what you're that saying. I get it like tenfold. Man. So when there's a little bit, I get a lot of it, and uh, it's a little too much for me. I like it. Good. Yeah, I feel like I could really get faded on this. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah, it's got me like kind of leaning back already <laughs> away from the microphone. There's a reason we're sharing this can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this came to us by way of uh, Tavor. If you guys haven't heard of Tavor, they're doing uh, awesome things and beer out to people, not for free, but uh, getting beer from different parts of the country to, to people and you can try new things. So, uh, yeah, this comes to us from uh, Evil Twin Brewing. Cool. 128 dry aged out. If uh, you guys tried it, let me know. If you got another 17.5 or, or thereabouts, let us know what you thought of that, too. Good luck. Yeah, because we've had the uh, 120 minute IPA, which is right around, I think it's oh, 18 yeah. or 19%. That was some classy shit. It was, but it was boozy as fuck. Like, yeah. there was no hiding the alcohol in that. Yeah. Where this is like, oh, yeah, it's a little strong. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, when you take just the taste, like, it's like, oh, yeah, there's, oh, a, yeah, little yeah, bit of, yeah. there's a little warmth in there. But when you drink that 120, it's like, <laughs> breathing fire you know so uh, it's funny man like you're like dude i don't even taste it and then you're like slurring your speech you don't even know it <laughs> you're all talking into the side of the microphone and shit <laughs> also it sounds like i'm in a different room yeah so uh oh, it's man. very interesting i'm glad we got our hands on it it's, uh, it's fun to try Whew. i don't think it's for me though but uh, definitely for you two. Mm. So that's good. We yeah. don't always have to agree either. It's, it's nice to have a little different opinion. It's nice to disagree. It's I agree to disagree. All right. Yeah, there's that. It's uh, definitely for me, but probably after a couple, I'd be out. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, Fuck, no I, kidding. Yeah, I think about a full can of this. Yeah, I'd give out, me man. one. I remember the first time I had 120 minute. Ooh. I had just gotten done working out. Like I'd, I'd gone jogging. Oh, yeah. And back in the day when I lived in the apartment, like a lot of my jogging routes would be near the uh, total line. And I'd sometimes just walk in there to see what they had. They had anything like, you know, rare or like a 120. Because back then it was hard to find. Now it's fairly easy to find. And uh, they had it. And I was like, oh, fuck. I'm getting this. <laughs> so then I, of course, couldn't jog home. I had to walk home because I was carrying a four pack of beer with me. And uh, got home after the jog, immediately cracked open a 120 because I really wanted to try it. And having, you know, not a whole lot of food in me, hadn't had any water since working out, put down that 120. Buddy, I was feeling it. Like, yeah. I was yeah. out. I took a nice little nap afterwards. <laughs> it was great. It's so. like your first beer all over again. <laughs> really was. It was like my first eight beers all over yeah, again. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Back in the Bud Light days, it'd mm-hmm. take a lot to catch up to a 120. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, all right. Some quick news before we get on out of here. One thing. I, I didn't want to pass up this story. A bear stole 36 beers, <laughs> chugged them down, and passed out drunk. Nice. Rangers arrive to help, and he goes for a second round. Um, sometimes you just need to get away with friends, hike to some remote neck of the woods, guzzle down a couple of cold beers, and enjoy nature. If you think this is just a human affair, you're wrong. There was one particular four-legged visitor who arrived at a campsite and discovered the perfect way to chill on a weekend. A group of campers who had set up their campsite had left their tents and belongings behind as they headed off to explore the outdoors. Unbeknownst to them, they had a guest whose only plan was to get a load of their beers. Weighing anywhere between 200 and 600 pounds, the five to six foot long, uh, according to National Geographic, curious American black bear snuck into the capsite before opening their cooler stashed away with a variety of cold brews. He then proceeded to start downing beers like water. (laughs) Clearly, he seemed to enjoy them as he couldn't stop himself from guzzling down can after can, 
leaving him wandering around drunk before <laughs> finally passing yeah before finally passing out on the lawn of the <laughs> Swift Creek campground. Oh yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Scott's done that a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> Authorities found That's him really... there and located a total of 36 beer cans with either bite marks or claw prints <laughs> uh, punctures in them. What a gangster. Yeah, right? Which led them back to the original campsite. If you thought that was funny, there's more. It seems like this black bear had a fine taste as he only seemed to want one brand of beer, Rainier beer. While investigating the scene, it was discovered that the bear clearly didn't take the bush beer Ooh. that he had bitten into since he left the rest untouched. But when it came to the Rainier beer, he was all in. Oh, my God. Yes. Doesn't care for the bush. Huh? No, no, not a bush kind of guy. Wow. But, uh, they need like to name Rainier. a beer after the bear. They really hey, should. Yeah. yeah. Have have like a stout called like the Black Bear Stout yeah. or something. Yeah, and have him passed out with thirty six beers around. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, um, it gets even better because when they went to relocate the bear, he ran up into a tree and then fell asleep for a while. <laughs> yeah, leave in him the alone. in the meantime, they set up a trap which included some food and of course more of Rainier course. beer. Oh, and he fell right into the trap, started drinking the beer. They trapped him darted him and moved him to a safer location. Oh, uh, poor guy. Yeah. Why'd they have to dart him? Uh, it sounded like he's darted yeah. himself. Yeah, just give him another 36 pack. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, this old man is my hero. The secret to living to 107. It's 107 years old. A wow, morning shot you. of whiskey. Uh, I <laughs> Mariano Pops Ratelli told the German. Nope. Toward the Georgia's Newman <laughs> Times. It's a 17 and a half percent, man. I've had a shot of whiskey in my coffee every morning for a hundred years. Uh, wait. So since he was seven, apparently. Holy sh- uh, I went to the doctor three times in a hundred years. He's dead. I'm still living. <laughs> Damn. Uh, when you live to 107, you can say whatever you want. It doesn't even matter which whiskey it is. Rotelli said that he'll drink whatever his son-in-law Bill Tire buys for him, and it's usually Jim Beam Black, which is pretty decent. <laughs> um, Rotelli also advised to make every day a holiday and to never worry. Rutelli was born in Pennsylvania to immigrant parents from Italy. He had four brothers that he went into the produce distribution business with and outlived all of them. Wow. Uh, he's He is far from the only centurion to live and not die by booze. Um, so anyways, moral of the story is keep drinking. There you go. I love a nice Irish whiskey or oh, Irish yeah. coffee, I mean. And uh, it sounds like he does as well. And then finally, of course, I said I'd get to this. Some Super Bowl fun, pa- fun facts just before the big game. Yes, we are. Uh, we eat, us Americans, 1.35 billion wings on Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a wing on Super Bowl Sunday. Really? Yeah. Greggy loves wingies. <laughs> uh, we drink 325.5 million gallons of beer. Hmm. I do that every year. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else? 103, or excuse me, $1.3 billion is spent on beer and cider. $979 million spent on soft drinks. Wait, cider? They put beer and cider in the same category. Yeah, who's drinking cider? <laughs> uh, I can think of a few people. Uh, I bet the commissioner of the booze league is. Oh, uh, shots man. fired. Shots fired. Wow. I'm going to deduct two points for that low blow. <laughs> Uh, this is even weirder, though. $597 million spent on wine. Who's drinking wine during the Super Bowl? Uh, I could probably think of some classy bastards who need to get punched in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, class shit up during <laughs> yeah, the They're not listening to this podcast. They can go eat a dick. Nice. 17.5%. Uh, yeah. <laughs> $503 million are spent on spirits. Okay. Right, not bad. Taking shots. Get some whiskey with tequila, whatever. Yeah. Uh, $348 million on bottled water. Two hundred and seventy-eight million on potato chips. Two hundred twenty-four million on tortilla chips. Mm-hmm. One hundred ninety-eight million on frozen pizzas. Why are we buying frozen pizzas? Who's for the Super doing Bowl? that? Assholes. <laughs> Fucking assholes. That's the worst Super Bowl party ever, right? A hundred million dollars spent on meat snacks. What does that mean? Like Slim Jims or, <laughs> what? or like a charcuterie board? <laughs> like what? Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? Uh, we'll skip down here a little bit. Eighty million spent on chicken wings. Seventy-four million dollars spent on cheese snacks. Sixty-two million spent on avocados. Thirty-nine million spent on salty snack dips. So I guess like ranch dip for your ruffles or oh, something. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Uh, Twenty-three million spent on deli platters. 
Here's somebody who can eat a, eat a dick. Thirteen million spent on vegetable trays. Oh yep. yeah, that guy. Yeah. Mm, that somebody guy. always brings it. Nobody ever eats it. Right. Exactly. Got to have your obligatory uh, veggies. That's right. And three million spent on deli guacamole. And then uh, Miami. It's their eleventh time hosting the big game. Mm-hmm. Making them the most hosted Super Bowl stadium of all time. They just passed the Superdome, who had 10. Oh, hey, you know, what was the uh, fucking... Uh, I'm doing it now. Here we go. Hey, <laughs> it's the beer. Yeah. Uh, Prince, when he did the halftime for, uh, I think it was Colts versus Bears. Okay. Was that in Miami? I have no idea. Fuck. <laughs> I was, I was trying to find out. It was kind of a trivia question I had with somebody. I was like, you know oh. what? I refuse to Google it, but I will find the answer. Colts and Bears. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, there's a game I don't give a shit about. <laughs> Colts and the Bears. Well, not anymore. Yeah. yeah. And and I hate to say this. I'm sure I'm going to find some haters on Twitter after this. But, oh, yeah. Uh, don't like Prince. Oh, Uh-oh. that's oh, right. Boy. Don't like Prince. I think he's a great guitarist. I think we went through this. Yeah, before, and that's where it ends. Perhaps I, on another show. I think his singing abilities are not that great. Or I felt like it was like a, where you didn't like Prince, but uh-huh. I felt like maybe this was a. And I know it. Well, I said I didn't like Neil Diamond, and it was kind of sacrilegious. Like no, either. you don't like yeah. him. No. He's what I mean. Sweet Caroline is great to get drunk and sing, but <laughs> on that, yeah, I, Prince did some of his best work for other people. I'll just leave it there. So, so who won that Super Bowl? Do you know? Oh, yeah, it was the Colts. Because uh, Rex uh, Grossman. the Bears had all his beers. <laughs> uh huh. Scott's been drinking. I see. Yeah. yeah. 17.5. Yeah, I laughed. So, I mean, I yeah, think I've been so, drinking so, too. Okay, fair He's enough. Been drinking too. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get the fuck out of here and get some chicken wings. Let's go drive somewhere. Let's go drive somewhere. Yeah. Uh, you guys let us know what you're doing for your Super Bowl party, whether it's wingies or pizza. Or uh, 17.5% beers. Hope so. Let us know on the grams, on the Twitters, whatever you got. At the Unfiltered Gentleman, except for Twitter, at Unfiltered Gents. There's another reason I don't like Twitter. They don't let my the name long <laughs> enough for the Unfiltered Gentleman. Yeah, the I'm unfiltered done with gents. Twitter. I'm done. Yeah, down with Twitter. I'll put the grams. Yeah. Uh, find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com. Leave us a joint. Wow. Drunk voicemail. Drink. Yeah, somebody else has been drinking. Sounds that like something boyfriend. pinky in the brain with it. That's drink. What, that's, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say when I grab a beer from someone. But yeah. drunk, <laughs> drunk voicemail. It sounds like I'm ready to leave a drunk voicemail. Eight zero five five three eight beer two three three seven. Hope everyone stays very well hydrated, especially for the big game. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night.